All right, so today we're looking at Jeremy Pena, shortstop, rookie with the Houston Astros, third round pick, taking over for Carlos Correa. Um, and this is uh, some pregame work. And so I love this pregame video stuff. I think it's so interesting to see players uh, and what they do to prepare for games at the big league level. Um, so I'm just going to kind of play this here and we'll talk over it. So I threw up a video a few days ago of Vladimir Guerrero Jr. going through some pregame work. And again, this is very common at the major league level. Uh, it's such a huge part of becoming a, a great infielder, having a routine, uh, building in the fundamentals, uh, attention to detail. One of the biggest things, and we've talked about this with hitting and um, whether it's pitching, it's really any part of the game, the attention to detail that major league pay players, um, the way they focus on what seems to be very simple, simple aspects of the game. That's how you become so good at your craft that you can then play the game on autopilot. Major League players take so many reps and they do it correctly so many times that when they get into the game and the ball is hit 110 miles an hour at them, their body only knows how to do it one way and it's the correct way. And that, again, can only happen through very, very intentional work. Really focusing, again, on all of the small details of the game. Jeremy Pena can field these balls probably 100 out of 100 times, maybe 500 out of 500. But I have no doubt in my mind that he's focusing on very specific things when he's doing this. So let's kind of just break a few down. So this is just, some people call this the Aussie drill. I mean, it's got a couple of different names, but basically we've just got a coach fun going. He's on his knees. Here's a couple of things to think about. The first thing that you'll notice is that the eyes are behind the glove, right? So as he turns his glove over here to go backhand, notice how his eyes follow the glove. His chest is over. His glove is working from the ground up. So the glove is low, but really see the eyes following the glove. We always talk about trying to get the eyes behind the glove and the glove behind the ball from the ground up. Notice the presentation of his glove. It opens early, right? So the ball is not there yet, but the glove is already open. So we have eyes behind glove. We have glove behind ball. We have glove open to ball. Again, glove presentation, so huge. He catches the ball. He goes thumb to thumb, right? So he catches it, thumb to thumb, transfer, fingers on top of the ball. Toss it aside, next rep. Now here, he works through the ball. So he, it looks like he's working on one hand work here. Here's the ball that's gonna be kind of a in-between hop. He pinches through the ball. He shortens the distance between the ball and his glove. But notice again, the glove open right? Glove open. We talk a lot about having eyes inside our glove. Show the eyes to the ball. Again, sounds like a simple idea. Sounds elementary. A lot of players don't do it. So eyes to the ball early. He works through the ball. We get a lot of questions on should I be positive through the ball or negative. Again, when we're trying to create a short hop, we want to work through the ball, be positive with our glove. Turn the in-between into a short. Try to create the shortest hop possible. Right, we're able to do that with our feet, but also with our glove. And obviously, when he's on his knees, he can't do it with his feet, so you have to really focus on being through the ball with your glove. Again, he feels the ball. He brings the ball up to the middle of his body. He transfers, takes the ball up. And notice, I'm going to go back and play this in normal speed again. Notice how he, again, he's very intentional. He's not trying to do it overly quick you can see he's re it's right like you can see him making sure that he gets the ball in the good part of the glove we went a little bit quicker on that one right that one's a little bit slower these first couple i'll do it slow motion here right he's really feeling it same thing here so making sure that he's getting a clean transfer every single time the transfer is such a huge part of the fielding process. And, and think about this. A, a lot of bad throws happen because of transfers that aren't clean. We don't go from, from glove to hand properly. 
And now the ball starts rattling around in our, in our glove as we're trying to get the ball out. Now the game starts to speed up on us, right? Our timing is off. Our body tries to get rid of the ball quicker than normal. And we throw the ball away. So it's so important to be able to practice going from glove to hand cleanly, right? Another thing that, that we talked a lot about um, when I had the opportunity to work and, and well, not work and play in Baltimore, Mike Bordick, who's a great player, great shortstop, talked a lot about how, you know, we want to field the ball off the, the exact same spot of the glove every single time. And where you get in trouble is when the ball doesn't go in that spot and the ball starts to rattle around in the glove. Watch this right here. So he opens the glove. We always talked about trying to get the ball right off my index finger. And so trying to get the ball right off that index finger right there. So the ball goes from there, boom, right to the hand every single time. Here we go again. Bang, right off the index finger. Again, that sounds simple. But when you're playing catch or when you're fielding ground balls, pay attention to where you get it on the glove. Are you getting it off the, off the same part of the glove every single time? If one time you get it off the index finger and then you get it off the pinky and then you get it off the palm, right, the ball's not going to go from glove to hand as seamlessly as it would if you get it off the same part of the glove every time. Okay, so just another little behind the scenes look at a, at a major league player going through his routine. This is very common. I wouldn't doubt if he does this every single day. And they're playing 162 games a year, and they're getting a lot of reps, and he's probably out here doing this every day. There's a reason why these guys are the best, at, best in the world at what they do. So um, hopefully this helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff, and we will talk to you later. What do you need to be a great infielder? Okay, let's talk about the mental game because this is such an important part of fielding. And a lot of people don't talk about this. If a hitter hits a ball 90 plus miles an hour, the ball's gonna travel about 90 feet in a half a second. I catch when my left foot lands. I get to the right, I brace, I go. So I'm gonna bring the ball here as my right foot starts to go to my left. take the ball out of my glove, my fingers should be on top of the ball. I don't take it out like this. I don't take it out like this. I'm on top of the ball right here. But it's not just about fielding the ball again. It's about fielding the ball properly every single time. If you're just gonna wait for your team to practice, you're not gonna be a very good fielder. If you're just gonna wait the field at practice when your coach actually does fielding practice, you're not gonna be a very good fielder. If you think you're gonna get great fielding three to five balls in infield outfield, you're crazy. You've gotta field a lot. And so you've gotta field before practice, you've gotta field after practice, you've gotta be able to do it on your own. Don't just wait for somebody to say, let's go practice infield. Go grab somebody and say, let's practice infield.